Hello, this is Scott Manley, and this is part two of my, the story of my attempts to build a reliable three-person, uh, three-kerbal moon lander. And so the new engines led me to wonder about what's happening in the math behind this. So I went out and I actually did some legitimate rocket science. What I wanted to know was how the specific impulse that they use converts into an actual specific impulse, which we can use with a... Um, the rocket equation. So as I understand it, the thrust the engines produce is consistent. What differs is the specific impulse which affects the fuel consumption. So I built a test rig and put it on the launch pad. Basically, we're firing each of the engines in turn and right clicking on them to see what the, the operational parameters are. And then I'm throwing these in to try and figure out the relationship between the specific impulse here and the actual fuel consumption in terms of mass. Now the other thing is that the fuel tanks have now a constant ratio. For every tonne of uh, mass difference between their full and empty, they now contain 200 fuel units. And that's what's important because the rocket equation doesn't care about the amount of thrust. What it cares about is the specific impulse, the start mass, and the end mass of your rocket. And so after a bit of calculating, I figured out that their specific impulse needs to be multiplied by the acceleration of gravity at the Earth's surface. That's 9.8 meters per second per second. And then that gets you the true specific impulse. So most of the engines in the game get a th specific impulse of 390, so we multiply that by 9.8, which is the acceleration of gravity on the Earth, and we get 3,822. Now what I want to do is take these numbers and apply them to the moon lander that I'm building. So a quick bit of arithmetic gives me a launch mass of 19.83 on the, the lunar lander, and a dry mass when the fuel is burnt of 11.83. That's a mass ratio of 1.68, and the logarithm of that is 0.52. Now we multiply that by our specific impulse, and we get a delta V of about 1975 meters per second. So now we know how much delta V our spacecraft has, we can figure out what we can do with it. So first thing is, how much do you need for each maneuver during a typical lunar landing trip? Well, for the Kerbin system, we haven't changed the positions of anything. So that's still the same. That's about 900 meters per second you need to take it from low Kerbin orbit out to a lunar rendezvous. The actual rendezvous and landing with on the moon will take at least 800 meters per second. And that is a scary approach. That's where you're basically thrusting at 100% and you stop exactly when you arrive at the lunar surface. Realistically, you're probably going to want a lot more than that. And then the final return will take around another 800 meters per second or so. Although with the RCS system, if we come up shy a little here, we can probably still complete our mission. But let's try and avoid that eventuality. And we even the non-rocket scientists out there by now will have figured out that 800 plus 800 plus 900 is way bigger than 1975. So what we can surmise from this is that the lunar injection part it needs to be carried out by another part of the spacecraft. So it's clear that this will be the final stage, but we will need another part of the rocket to obviously get it into orbit and then push it into the transmunar injection orbit. And with that sorted out, we can actually get on with building the rest of the rocket.